Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Back. We are going to continue to look at uh, our exercises found, example problems found in ASME PDB4. In particular, we're going to look at example E441, uh, shells under external pressure and allowable compressive stresses. So looking at, you know, vacuum type conditions. And uh, we're, we're going to be uh, working through that. And the, the uh, particular version we'll look at is 2013 version of that uh, PDB4, but um, we'll look at the 2021 that was just reviewed and, and sort of do some comparison of how it's changed. So let's have a look at the uh, at these issues and continue. So let's look at the uh, look at the, the 2021 version of ASME Section 8 Division 1 and uh, let's organize the, 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 the problem a little bit better. So we've got, you know, Section 8 Division 1, right? Uh, material is 516 grade 70 and um, struck, you know, material, pressure vessel material, cylindrical shell. And uh, as we continue, we got 150 centigrade. The dimensions are shown there. The thickness, we're starting with this thickness, so a thicker part. And the corrosion allowance is shown there. And it has an unsupported length of 636 uh, inches. And uh, that's enough for us to, to work into. So let's take a look at rate doing some lookup tables. So we got to go into section uh, section two, part D, subpart two, table TM1, and for, for our material at that temperature, and we pull out, you know, um, 195 gigapascals, and then we do the same, but we go into table Y1, and then we get 232 megapascals. here to look at more detail into table T1 and as you can see off to to the left to the uh, left over here you can see we have you know carbon steel you know with that low carbon content and then we can continue on we can see that our we have an elastic modulus of 195 megapascals at, based upon uh, the the temperature of 150 degrees centigrade. We continue on looking at table Y in more detail. So basically, uh, table Y1 looks like this. We have our 150 degrees centigrade, and it's line 24, and we get our value of 232. So we've got our, our calculations, the uncorroded thickness and T minus C. Uh, we have to do some re rearranging because we're going to use D, D, O, and D, and T. Um, quite a lot of the calculations, so we're just setting them up. So we look at the continue here with method one. There's, a, there's also a method two, which is that code case that we've talked about earlier videos called code case 265, which allows the use of um, section eight division two, uh, part four. So um, what we'll do is we'll have, we'll do the, part, the method one first, which is the most common one. And the method two um, is also available. So let's continue with method one. So we've got, uh, when you go to, to method, the Section 8 Division 1 method, we, we can find uh, some fundamental statements found in UG28, thickness of shells and tubes under external pressures. 
and you know it talks about the three forms of cylindrical of uh, cylindrical shells and we can have a look at that and you can see the different forms we have so in our example um, you know we have a you know a shell and but we don't have any stiffeners in it but L is defined most important L is defined as the distance, center line distance between, you know, stiffening supports. And so um, that's how we would do it. And there's other examples of, you know, uh, where you have, you know, flange connections, and this is how they would define it. And and so on. And this is the bottom head with, with, a, with an internal component and so on. And they do pretty well. And, and when you look at... Um, the Section 8 Division 2 method, they have almost identical type tables in terms of the definitions, which is, which is uh, convenient for sure. So we look at geometry ratios, so step one. So we look at, we're, in this case, we got to go to C, right, under, under UG28, and um, for, for shells and tubes and the required minimum thickness of a cylindrical shell or tube under external pressure or seamless or other along the tube but well shall be determined by the following procedures so in this case uh we'll we'll check this one out you can see how we arrange the values of do and dt well, right away we're already starting to use it so so let's take a look at this in more detail so we do our math we do our first step so there's when you look at that section right there's the what to do when d the outer diameter of the thickness is greater than 10 and there is also another set of procedures for less than 10 under ug 28 i think it's uh the other case is two so uh so we're going to follow the ug 28 c1 procedure So we're going to first of all do, do a check to make sure, and of course it's true. And that's how I set my spreadsheets up so that they're very automated and the ratio of L over D, 6.9, and D over T is 92. And uh, step two, geometry ratio. So let's, let's do the step two. So this is where we look at subpart three figure g so this is sort of the build up so in this case we can follow ug 28 uh, c1 and we can check this ratio and this ratio and we find in both cases they're false take a look at step three figure g determine factor a and basically what happens is we have six point nine then we go across and then we determine our other ratio, which is D over D over T, which you can you can see over on this line over here. You have to basically interpolate, and then you can continue onward, and you get your factor of 0 0.019. Now, if we can continue here, we can go to the applicable material chart. We have to do is we have to make confirm which uh, material chart we're going to use. So in this case, we just it's buried in table, you know, one one a in in section two uh, d. And then basically, what happens is you can see over here that the we're at section eight division one so we have the applicable spec so then we go and look this up and we find that we're we need to go to line 32 and uh you know the way the pages are cut you have to basically go to another page but you've got line 32 so let's take a look at that so let's take a quick look at uh, and continue with line 32 so on the next page the way the pages are cut out they they show it uh here but again remember that this is section eight Division one, and there are tables right here, CS2, which is shown. And there's some interesting material notes that we should take a look at. In my experience, they, these are, you know, to do with typically the high temperature properties and some of the warnings they see. So 
G10 talks about prolonged exposure above 425. And so, you know, the metallurgists have said that, you know, the carbon phase of the carbon steel may be converted to, you know, a very soft graphite material. And if you, there's more details on here. So the, these are just flags. Uh, S1 as well is, is for section one applications, which doesn't apply to us. But again, it's, you know, it's a high temperature issue. And the other one is, you know, time dependent properties. So allowable stresses, um, you know, for T1, uh, we have our note T2 in this case, because we can see T2 there. So this is for temperatures above 400 degrees centigrade that we can get some time dependent type properties. So the properties can, of the materials can change with time. And so um, these are just flags for one to be aware of. And in our case, we're at 150 degrees centigrade. So these, these notes in this case aren't applicable. With our, our work here. So step five, we've determined we need to use CS2 curve for our particular material. And uh, we've drawn a line, we know our factor A2, and we've gone across to the right as shown shown here. And you can see this is, you know, our value we determined before, and we go across and we get our value, which, you know, I've interpolated as 18.6. Uh, bear in mind also that we have, you know, these tables are available in tabulated forms. I have never really used these values. Um, I'm finding that there, there's, I don't know, they're a little bit, there's some, there's some, uh, it needs to be improved a little bit in my opinion, but uh, it's available and it, at the advantage of the tabular form obviously is to, um, so that you can, you know, program it, put it in Excel or, 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 you know, some kind of programming language and write yourself a package. So 18.6 uh, is our answer here. I've shown the PSI version of these curves for a good reason, because these curves are actually different. You see these factor Bs, they're different. Recall earlier that we had 18.6 for the metric. And uh, don't get caught on that. Because you'd, you'd think naturally that if they're ratios, they're dimensionalist, but uh, it's, it's because of the Fahrenheit uh, on the curves that are used. And also uh, the, the later equations, they have, they're specialized for, um, you know, the, the metric or imperial. So be aware of that. And and so let's take a look at this. So step CS5, the imperial version, you've got the same value and I go across. And in this case, you've got 2,700 for your B factor. We have a few more things here. We have step six, the maximum allowable external pressure, PA is, is calculated um, by the following equation, which is just the ratio. You can see our B factor in our last step and DO and DT are, are still showing up in, throughout our math. And this is basically how we calculate it, but not a, not a complex ratio with, with uh, division one. Basically what happens then is, you know, in step six, we calculated the, the, the PA. And, and in this case, our particular example, we got 39 PSA as our maximum allowable external pressure, okay? Using the following equations. And then, so I put the, you know, the, the metric version off to the right. That up, you can use step six or seven. So. Step seven is for the case where you have your value of A, which is following to the left of the, that CS2 curve, for example, that we saw. And in, the, in this case, you would uh, also use the A value. And I, I think this here is a, this is a two instead of a four. So there's a very slight devi deviation in this. So if I take a quick look at this, so step seven applies to this application of, for, you know, very small values of that A, and then you just basically use this equation because you can't really use B, okay? And then uh, 
but in our example we're over here so we would just use step six and then we would use step seven so once again step seven is not applicable in our particular example so in step eight we're just doing some comparisons of the available external pressure obtained in step six, you know, with step seven, which is, you know, the, uh, what we require in the service. And of course, you know, we have, we, we can, we can accept that PA is, is uh, available is less than what we need. So in this particular case, uh, we have to thicken the part and repeat the design procedure until it proceeds. And, um, and that's basically how we do this particular case. And uh, in summary, PA uh, from our calculations is the uh, 39 PSI external pressure. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now. Mm -hmm.